Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. Saturday, the 21st of January. Now, we've got used to excess deaths, unfortunately. And in the first week of January, uh, excess deaths were 30% higher than they had been in 2019 for the same period of time. Tragically, we've got used to uh, higher levels of deaths than normal. But what we've just found out now is that if we can compare 2022 as the whole year with uh, 2019 as the whole year, deaths in 2022 were 7.8% higher in 20 to 44 year olds. So 7.8% more young adults dying in 2020 as compared to 2019 in our young adult population. Now, this, this to me is absolutely momentous. It's an incredible increase in deaths in 20 to 44-year-olds. I haven't read anything about it in the mainstream media. I certainly haven't seen the Prime Minister, the Chief Medical Officer, and the Chief Scientific Officer standing in the banners in Downing Street trying to explain this national unfolding disaster. Why is no one talking about this? Now, this information is from the Faculty of Actuaries who are dealing with life insurance. As always, don't take my word for it. The public domain information is there and it is readily and freely available. This surely is a national scandal that is being just completely, virtually completely ignored. Why aren't more people talking about this? Now, this is the Continuous uh, Mortality Investigation. Uh, he's publishing Frequent UK Mortality Analysis. Today's update covers up to the uh, first week in January, so we're going to be looking for more updates here, so we'll be keeping an eye on this. Mortality for 2022 as a whole was 4.5% higher than 2019. 7.8% lower than the first pandemic year, 2020. That's not surprising because that was a pandemic year. And 2.2% lower than 2021, which was also a pandemic year. Um, but why is it still 4.5% higher? And we know that all these deaths are not attributable to COVID. They say there's a striking difference in how mortality rates in 2022 compared to 2029 at different ages, as we've said. 2.5% higher in 75 to 84s, 7.8% higher in 20 to 44 year olds. This is just a huge difference. Increase in mortality. Remember, this is 2022 as compared to 2019. The government must give an explanation of this. This must be discussed. It's just incredible that these deaths are occurring in our young adults. quite incredible. In the UK, there's been around 155,000 uh, more deaths from all causes than expected from the start of the pandemic to the 6th of January 2023. Uh, so basically, excess deaths, 155,300 for all of the pandemic time. Start of the pandemic to the 6th of January 2023. Of these, as you would expect, most occurred in 2020. 72,900, but there's quite a few occurred in 2021 and 31,000 occurred in 2022. But we know that the majority of these excess deaths in 2022 were not attributable to COVID. There were other causes of these excess deaths. In the UK, in the second half of 2022, there was uh, 26,300 excess deaths compared to 4,700 in the first half of 2022. So way, way more excess deaths in the second half of 2022 compared to the first half of 2022. Remember, all this is from the uh, Society of uh, Actuaries, who clearly have a professional interest in this. The number of excess deaths in uh, England and Wales for the first week of 2023, 3,437 3, higher than it had been 2019. 
not a five-year average, but higher than 2019, in January 2019, for the same period of time. Now, I know some people are going to say there's going to be difficulties gathering data in the first week of January, but this is compared to the first week in January in the pre-pandemic year uh, 2019. And as we've seen, if 2022 is anything to go by, in 2022, we know that adults 20 to 44 were dying at 7.8% more than they were in 2019. You know, this is not, we can't attribute this entirely to people not being able to get a few statins during the pandemic, or even a few blood pressure pills during the pandemic. There's other causes to this. We can't attribute it to that, as uh, some government sources have been attempting to do. We want to know the full reasons for this. Equivalent to more than 30% deaths more than expected. So 30% up for 2023 already and is... Well, I don't want to think about what's going to happen in the next few weeks, really. Let, 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 let's hope that this is a blip, but if it is, it's an awful long blip. It's a blip that's lasted throughout the second half of 2022. Now, speaking uh, on this website here, uh, Mr. Kukorbus Daniel, uh, chair of the CMI Mortality Project Committee, although weekly excess mortality in the second half of 22 wasn't nearly as high as the peaks earlier in the pandemic, it was persistent. So obviously, 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 in the peaks, we'd expect it to be higher. But this was persistent. It just kept going. To put it another way, people kept dying. This led to more excess uh, deaths in the second half of 2022 and in the second half, than the second half of any year since 2010. Excess mortality has been particularly high recently with more than 7,000 excess deaths in the three weeks to the 6th of January. So the last couple of weeks in 2022, first week in 2023, and I think this is just England and Wales data, 7,000 excess deaths. Just just think about this. If, if 7,000 people had died in a terrorist incident... It would be it would be all over the, it would be all over the news. It would be everywhere, uh, rightly. But we've had seven thousand excess deaths in this in this what three week period, um, and not not a, a squeak from the government that's supposed to be looking after us. And that's not a party political point. This is the whole institutes of state that seems to be letting us down. Now, um, that's all I wanted to say, really. Um, this is a completely different topic here. Indus Hindustan Times, um, national Indian newspaper. Um, now, we've been talking about Davos. So uh, Albert Barol, the chief executive of Pfizer, was in, uh, has been in Davos. Um, I don't know why, and, and I haven't been invited. So I'm well put out, as I've said before. So say you haven't been invited either. It's not for plebs like you and me, apparently. World Economic Forum meeting, series of tough questions about the efficacy of COVID-19 were asked by journalists. Now, I did put these, uh, some of these in, but other sources that have uh, quoted this information of, um, let's just say they're no longer as readily accessible in the public domain, so I didn't put them in, but. Anyway, uh, Mr. Bonjour an answered these questions. Uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day. So um, I put that in because uh, um, hundreds of you have been talking about a, a particular video. I'm not going to mention it because um, it's been it's not readily available in all aspects of social media. What do you call that guy that bought Twitter recently? Elon Musk was in there. Anyway, separate matter. Right, uh, Indian Minister for State Information and uh, Technology, Rajiv, and so I'm not going to try and pronounce your name, my apologies. But this is the in Indian Minister of State for Information and Technology. In this same article in the Hindustan Times said this, uh, just to remind all Indians that Pfizer tried to bully Government of India into accepting conditions of indemnity. 
well, that's what um, that's what this Indian government minister thinks. His opinion, of course, we couldn't possibly comment. Uh, that's just his opinion. Um, but 2nd of December 2020, this is from The Independent. UK government has granted pharmaceutical giant Pfizer illegal indemnity protection, protection from being sued. If Matt Hancock would like to come on the channel and explain why that was when he was in government, he'd be more than welcome to come. Or, or Boris Johnson, or Chris Whitty, or Patrick Valance, or any of those that were on all those news conferences at the time. They'd all be welcome. Explain why this indemnity was given. Enabling its coronavirus vaccine to be rolled out across the country as early as the next uh, week. Of course, that was written in uh, 2nd of December 2020. Of course, I could have picked any number of things that talked about the indemnity granted to Pfizer and others by the uh, British government. I think the American government did the same. 16th of December 2020, Britain to spend £3.7 billion on vaccines, probably a bit more now. Uh, Libel... Uh, a vaccine uh, Britain spent 3.7 billion on vaccines and bear liability so the British government bears liability according to this news report in Reuters 16th of December London Britain has agreed to spend this is 16th of December 2020 London Reuters Britain has agreed to spend 3.7 billion pounds on COVID-19 vaccines and in most cases will bear the liability of claims are made against the pharmaceuticals firms involved on the national audit said the national audit of said on Wednesday We don't know why the government would give this authorization, but they did. I'd like an explanation for that. Um, yeah, I'd like an explanation for that. Uh, freedom of information requests are often helpful. Uh, this one here is from the um, UK government up here, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority. So they should be on the ball, shouldn't they? These are the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulator Authority, the people that regulate medicines and healthcare products, such as all the vaccines were authorised were authorised by them. Um, check it out for yourself. Now, this is a Freedom of Information request. I would like to know what are the indemnity liability clauses with the vaccine that is to be rolled out this month? And, of course, this was dated... Um, 5th of December 2020 here. So that's a question. Fair question. Fair question. Furthermore, I would also like to know who is liable for any adverse side effects that occur. Fair question. Let's get the, uh, the answer now from the National Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Authority. The MRHA holds no information on this. What? No information on this. We recommend that you contact the NH England for this information. This sort of book passing, in my view, between government departments is just not acceptable. Hiding behind complexity, and it's not my fault, mate, is just not acceptable at this level. Just not acceptable. Anyway, another question. I would like to know why Pfizer and the NHS staff uh, administering the doses require full uh, indemnity. Fair question. The MHRA does, holds no information on this. We recommend that you contact NHS England for this information. I'm, I'm not making this up. Look, it's on this website. It's on here. Look at it. Unbelievable. I'm going to leave it there before I say anything else. Thank you for watching.